previously on the Pole Mates Podcast. The boys discuss their latest bowel movement. Massive. Probably. The biggest of the year? I would say. Yes. It's my favourite of the year, I think. Yeah. Craig reveals why you should always start at the beginning. There's no better place to start, really, is there? Yeah. I think that's probably the best. Yeah. And Martin shares his thoughts on that Kim Kardashian video. From what I'd seen of it, it looked like there was a coming together. Hello guys and welcome back to the next podcast episode. Hello. It's been a very eventful couple of weeks. Massively, personally as well as uh, racing wise. Yes, yes. You announced the other day that you're pregnant, so that's... Uh... Uh, yeah, and she's due next week. <laughs> Uh, the, the beer's got a lot to answer for, so, actually. It's <laughs> exciting time. <laughs> no, it has, it has been a um, very big week, hasn't it? Really? Yeah. A couple of weeks. We've had uh, the touring cars, we've had the Formula E, the Formula One, Le Mans. I've had to change a career and uh, I think we're ready to go. Excellent. So, uh, weekend before the one just gone. Uh, yes, we had uh, we had touring cars that weekend. We were touring cars. We had uh, Formula E that weekend from Switzerland, from Zurich. Yes, first race there for fifty three years. I yes, believe. they yes. did their motor racing years. ban just for electric. Just right. for electric. Just for electric. Because it's not really motor racing. But it doesn't. Stop. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I don't mean that. Get it out. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was going to say it doesn't stop my cousin Gino, who drives around his in his Impreza at city speeds. Legal silly speeds. Legal silly speeds. Yes, he. Uh, yeah, if you see an Impreza Estate driving around Luzerne with a seven foot hunking man in it, that's that's Gino. Noted. Well, he's, he's teddy bear in. Really. Try and get him as a guest on the podcast at some point. <laughs> Doesn't speak English. That'll be fine. No, that'll be Google Translate. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it will be fine. <laughs> so, uh, kicking off then with uh, British touring cars. Shall we start? Yes. Um, the, the, the first thing I took from it was, uh, did you happen to see Plato's interview before the race? I did see Plato's interview before the race, yes. He was not a happy bunny. He's not a happy bunny, no. And I think they're probably all wishing that they'd stuck with their own Subaru tuned engines rather than giving them to uh, Swindon to I, do that. I think so. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a, I can understand kind of their logic in, in going that route, but... The, the, the engine was not a weak point in the car last year. No, no. it's just got weaker. Yeah, they've they've taken something good and yeah, and, and ruined it. <sighs> and there's no turning back from it all season. No, that's uh, that's it. It's done now. Yeah. Um, obviously, well, we do have the the gap, the the, the mid season break coming up soon. But even so, th there's no way they're they're back in the title hunt now. No, and though, no. Although Ash Sutton is technically closer to the front than what he was this time last year um points wise he's not though <laughs> he, it's, there's just no way of getting it back from here the, no. the car's not quick enough at least the car had potential last year it, it doesn't have that this year no. so the other drivers in front of him are too quick to catch because they've got the same summer break yeah to keep working on their cars yeah. as well That's, so. the only thing i will say from ash sutton's point of view if they do get a miracle done over this summer break a lot of the there's no clear runaway driver it's it's no. it's a good job this year should i say should i should I actually say this say it say it i think if shedden was in the championship this year i think he'd be a long way clear by now you do wonder he's so he was so consistent yeah if he had a bad qualifying you know he'd be high points in in race two and probably a win race three if he had a poor, if, if, if he had a, well, if he had a good qualifying, he'd, he'd win the first, he'd win, he'd win the, the second, or exactly. be up there, and yeah. Exactly. Um, and th there's no driver at the moment that is particularly consistent like that. No. And ballast is having a huge effect this year, I think. It is, it is. They have, they, did they up it this year or did they up it last year? That, they've upped it recently yeah. to, everyone was getting used to carrying 44 kilos. And now suddenly it shoots up and... And actually, I had a word on that for I think it was race two or race three, but I won't I won't go there now. Just what a driver told me. 
Uh-huh. And so uh, ab- about it, yeah. Ooh, friend. But a friend. <laughs> Drive a friend. I wish. <laughs> Drive a customer who I won't be serving anymore, unfortunately. No. No. Um, so, pole position with Simpson. Yeah. Came completely out of left field yes. that one. I don't think anyone saw that coming. Uh, it wasn't a wet qualifying session either. It was dry yeah. and... It was on merit. Yep. Yeah. It was... He was quick. Absolutely nailed it. Yeah. As he did race one. Yeah. yeah. He was brilliant in race one. Foot down, gone. Slight concern over smoke coming out of the front of the car yes. on the sort of the the heavy loading right handers. Yeah. And he had Chilton up behind him as well. Yes. Uh, yeah. And Chilton's been there and done it all. And, you know, you look in your mirrors and you see that massive yellow shredded wheat car there. It must be a bit of a worry, but. Yeah. No, he held him off. Yeah. It was brilliant racing it was uh, unfortunately the smoke I guess caused an issue it, th- there was a deeper issue there and luckily the car held on yeah because he didn't make it out for race two or three no which was sad which was sad but I'm sure he would have he would have taken that at the start of the day <laughs> one win and, and yeah. sit and watch the rest of the yeah. action uh, but it'd be interesting to see how he goes from now on in because that's going to be a hell of a confidence boost for him yes so, that'd be huge that'd be huge uh, and it may even bring some more sponsors on board for him that, as well that would be nice that would be nice and uh, what a good job Eurotech are doing. They're, 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 they bought the team off of um, Mike Jordan a few yeah. years back. They're, I think Mike uh, Jeff Smith was running himself yes. and yeah. Martin Depper. And, and they never really looked that great, to be honest no. with you. Jeff Smith, uh, in, in recent years, has been, have been doing a lot better uh, up until his accident, which was unfortunate. And I think Dan Lloyd came in and, and showed the car had pace. They just bought that on this year. They, I think they've bought that on this year. They've got um, obviously Jack Goff, very good driver, very quick driver. Brett Smith's been impressing me as yes, well this year. Yeah, he's getting, been getting stuck in and he's moving further up. Been quicker than I expected. I've yeah. got to admit, I didn't expect yeah. much from him. And no, uh, he's been good. Matt Simpson. Now, I mean, it's probably helped by the fact they've got the new Honda engines in them this year. They're yeah. running the same engines yeah. as the. Uh, as the main team dynamics team but it just shows they've made the right decision on engines where others haven't exactly so, exactly that yeah yeah that's a good engine decision so uh, we, I wonder if Plato could buy one and secretly put it in the Subaru <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if anyone had noticed yeah um, that'd be interesting oh. so uh, then on to race two obviously Simpson's engine had blown so he couldn't take part yeah which so left uh, Chilton, Chilton leading the way Paul with um, very fast starting BMWs behind yes. luckily though it seems that they've got a nice middle ground with the uh, with the starts now they've, they've hampered the rear wheel drives a little bit yeah and they're not just going past five or six no. cars off the line anymore which is a, a nice thing to have because yeah. otherwise they'd just be up the road and gone and you shouldn't sit there every race start expecting thinking well there's a rear wheel car in fifth they're going to be first into the first corner. Yeah. That's not natural. Yeah. That's not right. Yeah, so it's not. They seem to have got a, good, a decent balance now. Yeah, that's. You know, I tried it a couple of years ago with having the longer first gears on them, didn't they? Yeah. Which didn't quite work as well as whatever they're doing now. It's, it's good though. At least they keep thinking of these things and trying to keep the racing close. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, race two, the tyres dropped Chilton back, unfortunately. Uh, Turkington took the win, and there are a lot of tears afterwards. Yes, um, yeah, for, um, lost his, for his late mum. So that was a nice, um, a nice. Uh, even Matt Neal was stood there, and you could see him welling up. And you know, it obviously even meant something to him. Yes, yeah. No, it's like, it, Colin's a nice guy. Yeah. I don't think um, there's anyone out there that's got particularly a bad word to say about him. No. So it's uh, that was a nice, a, a nice moment. Yeah, for what's been a it's tough, tough couple of weeks for him. Mm. So get out there and get that. And I. I still think it, the title will be okay, his so he's, he's well and truly back in the hunt now and this is uh, I think he's only going to get stronger from here on yeah. in he's so as you said earlier about Shedden being consistent he is the consistent one on the grid now yes uh, yeah yes. yeah he's had a bit of bad luck at the start of the season the, the, he, he's had good qualifying positions and the car didn't get off the line at Brands was it no um, yeah I think it was it, it, he has this issue with the BMW it only seems to be his as well it, where the engine just seems to shut down on him yeah on the uh, on the parade lap and they can't get it restarted for whatever Strange. reason. But uh, no, he it, a very good job from from Turkington, um, as per usual. Always, you know, he's not a flare driver. He goes out there, he does his job. 
picked yep. up the track. Very rarely makes contact with anyone. Yeah. Unnecessary contact with anyone. Yeah, yeah no, I like him. I like him. Good Always comes across stuff. really well. So. And then race so it's a, well, yeah, race two. I don't really remember anything else happening. I haven't really got much else in my notes. So. No, uh, t to be honest, it was um, fairly fairly standard after mm. the start. It's quite clean. Yep. Yep, nothing major happened no. that I can recall at this moment. Uh, a good, another good result for Tom Chilton. Getting yes. another podium. Yeah, another podium, which is nice to see. They've had the promise in quali, uh, especially with Tordoff off as well. Um, the car is quick, yeah, but they've not really had the results to back it up, and now motorbikes seem to be getting that. They finally so. come, which is where Chilton's problems probably started, because as he told me the other day, he finished race two. He had a bottle of champagne in each hand, and was swigging from them. And Dave Bartram had to come over and take them off of him and say, look. You've got another race in a minute. You you need to be ready for that. Yeah, he thought it was race three yeah, already, it? and it was really. <laughs> oh yeah, that was race two, and he had to then give over the champagne and go and get himself ready for, for race three. <laughs> have a strong coffee. But, uh, yeah, that's it. But as you said, they are they are tested. He could he could have gone to um could have gone up to the Honda pit and spoke to Dan Camish and got some sacred coffee on the go. <laughs> yes, yes, he's got the sacred deal now. <laughs> Uh, it's a good deal to have good coffee in sacred yes so, good little place that yeah that's it it's, I have a vlog coming where they are in it oh that'd be good that'd be nice to see but and I'm, with a quick link to sacred they sponsor um, Porsches at GTE yes cars uh, yeah. who had a good result at the morning so we'll come back to that a bit later on they're getting involved yes yeah it's nice to see my two favourite things coffee and racing yes spot on so <laughs> if sacred want to come over and have a stall at Brands I will fund you because I will buy so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sacred, the official coffee of Pole Mates Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I need a mug now. <laughs> you are a mug. <laughs> <laughs> and on to race three. On that note, <laughs> uh, Rob Austin on pole. Yes, yeah, another pole, a reverse grid pole for the yeah. Alpha. Mm -hmm. um, good. Hey, the car's getting there. Yeah, it's a lot better than what we saw when we went testing at the start of the season. It look good in testing. It, it looks all over the place. But um, uh, no, it's, it seems to be going yeah. going well at the moment. Another thing on Rob Austin that came up on Sunday, we were at Butchfest at Brands Hatch, and there were a couple of Rob Austin fans there. And as I said to my wife, they never ever do things by halves. No, they, they don't. They both had the shirts. He had the cap. She had green in her hair. She had very dark hair with green at the bar. I don't know the technical word. And he even had green trainers on. Nice. And I nudged Jeb and I just said, you, you can tell exactly who they're supporting straight <laughs> away. They never ever do things by halves. Yeah. Fans. <laughs> it's a bit like watching the Dutch fans. At a yeah, race it really event. is. <laughs> just head to toe in orange. It's great. There's a real bit of colour out there. Good. Good. That's what I like to see. Repping the brand. So, yeah, that's it. But the minute I saw them from behind, I just nudged her and I said, they've got to be Rob Austin fans. Yeah. And then he turned around with his hat on. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good stuff. But, uh, no, he's a very popular driver, and he got another reverse grid pole. And then on we went into the madness of race three. Uh, yes, yeah, it was a it was a little bit of a, a classic race three, wasn't it? Proper British touring car race three <laughs> on the start line. But yes, uh, yep, yeah. um, which involved Roy Butcher being thrown into the air <laughs> by a, a well, a, an unsuspecting. Uh, Honda, wasn't it? I forget which one it was. Now, Oliphant. Was it? Oh, sorry. Um, Oliphant, Smiley, Bushel. Yes. Yeah. I've got written down here. So Bushel went for the gap, didn't he? Bushel went for the gap between Oliphant and uh, Smiley. Smiley. Yeah, Smiley. Uh, and uh, neither of them realised he was there, and then it it, it all went it wrong a in a closing gap, wasn't yes. it? The gap was there. The ga yes, the gap was there, despite what Oliphant said after the race. I'm sure he probably changed his mind after seeing yeah, yeah. the replays now. But, I think um, that was very much, he still had his helmet on when he said that. Uh, yes, um, yeah, yeah. You know, he thought he'd been hit up the back and he hadn't. He'd actually, it was, you it know, was, he was there were three himself. cars all moving into one space. You know. It's it's going to happen, though, yeah, isn't that's it? it. Occasionally you are going to get it. It normally happens at brands, actually, doesn't it? There's yeah. a few recent things. Um, Before they even get to the end of the pit wall, I remember yeah, one year. Yes. We couldn't even see what was going on. We were still sat there like, why yeah. aren't the cars coming where round? Are, where's Plato? <laughs> oh, great, he's out. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, uh, uh, overall, a, a strong weekend for, for WSR and the Beamers. Yes. Yeah, well, they uh, they got the one, two, three there. Yeah. Which was another thing that Chilton said. Yeah. He said, you wouldn't believe how frightening it is 
when you're driving along, you've got ballast on your car, and you see Andrew Jordan charging you down. I can imagine that. Would he be said quite... it was that really got him this weekend. It was when he looked in his mirror, and every time he looked in his mirror, that car was closer and closer and closer. That's striking livery on that um, as well. Yeah. I can imagine that's uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's probably not the best thing to, <laughs> to have bearing down <laughs> so on that, you. That did really hit him, that. Not literally, obviously, but... It is Andrew Jordan, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be nice to Andrew yeah. Jordan now. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, AJ. <laughs> I want to actually be friends with him again. He is, one of, the, he is one of the fairer drivers on the grid. He is. He's a, he's a talent. Oh, undoubtedly. So, after that race weekend, we have got... Uh, we've got Colin Turkington now leads the championship, which I think we both think he's now going to run off with this I think he'll try and run off with it but I think there's a piece of elastic there I think they'll keep trying to reel him in yeah, I think he'll yeah. do it yeah yeah. No, I, think I don't think it'll be as easy as it won't be easy let's hope not for, for entertainment's sake but he's 12 points clear of Adam Morgan and Jack Goff uh, they're both on 112 points in second and third and then Tom Ingram and still the impressive Josh Cook um, is in fifth when you look at it, first down to sixth, well, first on 124 and sixth on 98 points. Yeah, six is Matt Neal on 98. Uh, so even if you go all the way down to eight, Tom Chilton's on 90 points after that good weekend. So it's, um, it's, it's certainly still as close at the top, but yeah. I get the feeling we're going into Snetterton. Are we going into Snetterton? We're going into Croft. Croft, Croft is, a, is a real wheel drive yes. track, yeah. and Colin has always gone well at Croft. So, um, short of a disaster there for him I, I think he's going to extend his championship lead yes and then we go to uh, places like Snetterton and um, uh, Rock Rockingham yeah for the last time for the last time uh, Rockingham has been taken off the calendar it's been the double at Thruxton next year it's it's real talking about Rockingham it's it's a real shame to be honest, they did. They spent a lot of money building that place, and the facilities were amazing when it when it started. Uh, obviously, they had IndyCar come over, and yeah. and they ran it for a couple of seasons. Uh, but for whatever reason, just the standards have not been maintained. They lost. They lost IndyCar. The, the racing wasn't particularly great, if I remember. I remember they showed it live on telly. The BBC did yeah. as a, oh. a um, like a. a, a first IndyCar race in the UK for, yeah. for IRL race because Champ Cars came over and, and raced at Brands but um, obviously there was a bit of a fiasco last year where they couldn't put people in the stands for it was, it was on safety grounds they couldn't open yeah. the grandstands yeah. uh, and that's ultimately hurt them really because they've lost this and there's, there's not really an event that's going to go there that's no, a big there's no big coming back event. when you lose an event other events then start to look and they won't book it no, no it's won't. sad so, uh, as you alluded to earlier Thruxton now gets a second round yes which has drawn some criticism on uh, social media why why are we going back to Thruxton why why can't we use another track uh, one person pointed out why don't we do Thruxton in reverse yeah I don't think safety wise that's a good idea yeah. Um, the only track I believe that can be run in reverse is Knock Hill because they run motorbike races uh, yeah. in reverse there yeah. uh, but uh, to be quite honest uh, I mean there's someone else uh, there's, a, there's a Facebook group called uh, is it BTCC or Touring Car Talk it's one of those two yes. yes and someone on there put a list of all tracks that exist in the UK including one that is now a housing estate including one that's a housing estate a couple estate. of drag strips yes some uh, go-kart circuits a lot of airfields a lot of airfields that have just got cones out for the odd track day yes yeah um, <laughs> someone on the thread mentioned Brooklands yes yeah which I, th I thought was good because half of that is, is under a housing estate half yeah. the, the rest of what remains is well we couldn't run our radio controlled cars on it it's that rough <laughs> The there is a little go-karting circuit though if they were mentioning um oh what was the circuit yeah, yeah, they... we, did, we did find a little go-karting circuit the... see the video it's on the video it's on the, yeah it's on a on a last uh, last vlog they could they could use that i'm sure if some of the places have been mentioned i think you better fit one car around that track yes yeah well Alton park's narrow so <laughs> <laughs> that has a race the, the one thing i would 
like to have seen back. I mean, I'm quite happy that Thruxton's got it. Thruxton yeah. is, is a good circuit, and I do believe if you go back in the Super Touring car in the days, they used to have two rounds anyway. Did, so it, yeah. it's no, it's not a new thing. It's not a new thing. Yeah. Uh, Brands has two, obviously, on its two track layout. Yeah. It would have been nice, I think, perhaps to have gone to Donington on the Grand Prix loop again. That was mentioned as well, and I thought that was the most serious. This thread turned into a whole bit of a joke, but that was yeah, mentioned, was. and that was the one that I looked at and thought. I like the idea of Thruxton because it's near to us and I can possibly now go to three races next year. Yeah, yeah. And if it was Donington, I wouldn't be going up there twice. I'd like to go up there once. No, there's one thing that we would probably like to do next season is go to the Donington round. Yeah. Um, with obviously, uh, Chris um, lives up that way as well, so we could get him involved, which would be which would be good. Um, the, the other track that was mentioned has held a, a, a British Touring Car round before sort of within the last 20 years is Mondello Park now yeah. I would quite like that that would be a nice a nice place to go back to uh, it'd be great for, for Colin Turpington as well to have a, a like even more of a home race I'd like to see racing in Wales and in Northern Ireland just to make it a genuinely British thing that it would be good that much there is a there is a Wales track has, has it been given the go ahead? There was a, there was on about a, a, a big. It was talked about quite a lot because it was going to take over from Silverstone and host Formula One. Yeah. But I don't know what happened with it. No, I I don't. So that's a bit of a shame. But there's obviously there's the Anglesey track. Yes. Yeah. That was also mentioned, which I do believe has the correct licensing to be able to hold a BTCC event. So. You never know. You never know. But uh, Thruxton's got it. They've got the infrastructure already in place, and uh, they've got they, their new building there. They've, exactly. you know, exactly. They're struck all the irons hot for the place. Exactly. Could do it the world of good. Exactly. Could do the circuit. Yeah, it could. Do. Hopefully, they're improving their uh, behind the scenes stuff there because it's. If you're a, if you're a fan, and you've been there. If you've been to other circuits that do the job very well, it's a bit of a shock going to Thruxton if you're yeah. a fan. That's the trouble. We're spoiled with MSV circuits because they are so they well They do run. it really, really well. And I'm pleased that they've got Donington now as yeah. well because that's part of the reason I really want to get up there and, and, and go. We've, we've been to Donington before, not for a race event, but we've, we've been to the track and it's, it's nice up there. Mm. It'd be interesting to see what they've done. I was hoping they were going to buy Thruxton, but actually Thruxton seems to be sorting itself out yeah. so yeah, they're doing, yeah, they're doing good luck well. to them yeah yeah um during the formula the, the the touring cars even we had formula e racing in switzerland yes yes we so did. which i believe you didn't see any of i no, i haven't as yet um but i did um because I, it's all it's all heating up now it's um crunch end of the season isn't it for formula e yes so now we only have two races left which is the double header in new york and it's getting tight believe it is is there two people up for the title this year is it sam bird and john sam bird Verne? and john eric Vern are the two yeah has daniel up got an yeah. outside chance or is it is it all mm. over now points where he can um this week and degrassi became mathematically impossible he can't hold on to his title um he needed to get pole position fastest lap and win the race i think right okay and i don't think he did any of those actually he got my fastest no he didn't do any of those so uh I don't know. He did have a good race, though. Um, so anyway, pole position. It was the first ever pole for Jaguar with Mitch Evans. So it was very, very good lap. Um, first lap, they're going round. Always the first lap accident. Daniel Lapped hit a curb. PK hit him, and they had to change Apps' wing, which we talked about IndyCar the other day and how easy it is to change an IndyCar wing. Formula E was very, very easy to change as well. It turns out. Yeah. Which I didn't realise. Oh, Similar. Good similar process with the bolts and them being quite close together mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. that impressed me that's something formula one needs to look at it's something they probably won't need to do much of next year with a new generation car because it's all um no it's flatter yeah yeah, yeah. yes they won't but, uh, no it was that that was something i paid particular attention to um anyway by lap eight Vern, who had started quite far but he made up six places he flew blimey lucas flew lucas degrassi and uh, he he took out Evans quite easily for the lead. He just he seemed to be driving past everyone. Um, 
uh, Rosenquist. I keep saying Rosberg because I just keep writing Ross down. <laughs> uh, Rosenquist crashed and decided to drag most of his car across the track and leave it there. Oh, that's that's useful. Which yeah, it, it wasn't brilliant. Um, so it, it left his wing on the track, and the now lapped Rosenquist was still going. Jeff went to dodge him and caught the wing. So we then got a four calls yellow for that. So oh. everyone pitied under that. Yep, yep. Um, Vern jumped in the car and it wouldn't start. <laughs> so, so he's going for the title here and everything that could stand in his way he did. <laughs> um, he came out ninth, Bird came out fifth. Um, then because of the four calls yellow, there were a lot of drive throughs because people were speeding under it. I think we'll get to Boemi and yellow flags later on. <laughs> <laughs> he was one of them Buemi, Lopez and Vern he spread under a yellow yes funny enough actually Buemi never when we get to the Le Mans cover Buemi, Lopez, Vern and Lossera who were all at Le Mans who were all speeding Le Mans. under this yellow uh, yeah, yeah, and Mitch yeah. Evans as well so it was barely shown on telly but Oliver Turvey managed to make up 11 positions um, good drive I've got no idea how he did it because they didn't really show it they just thought at the end I think it might have been um the pit stop game yeah I think part of it was and at the end of it they just thought, oh, well, hang on he's up there now yeah, when did <laughs> it come yeah it very <laughs> much was um, but yeah it was, it was alright race things happened um, Degrassi won it Bird second D'Ambrosio in third so a bit of a mix up again yep. you know a yep. nice mixed podium that we're getting good result for Bird um, yes keeps him up there and it now means that Jeff is top with 23 points between him and Sam Bird going into New York yes double header which and, uh, uh, should suit the Virgin because him and Lynn Bird and Lynn have gone well there in the past yes yeah they had a very good well uh, yeah Bird was uh, Bird won the both rounds? Did he win both I think rounds? he won so both, he and I think Lynn got a pole at some point yes. out there. Yeah, I think you're right. It, it, they had a very, very good end to the yeah. season last year. So, the, the one thing I, I wanted to talk to you about, talking about Formula E, and uh, obviously Audi have a team in Formula E at the moment. It was their, this is their first proper year yes. as a manufacturer. They're, they're big sisters coming over next year. Yes. In Porsche. Does this signal the end of, of Audi in the future? Do you think they'll give it like one more, maybe two more seasons and then perhaps move back to WEC? They're supposedly in it to stay, but as you say, are they going to have both That's in a... there? You can understand it if they were still apt and more of a customer team. Yeah. It's you wouldn't think anything of it. but Quite, quite a bit of money coming out of the same pot yeah. to running to two teams there, which only one can win because the other one's got to lose yeah it doesn't so. normally work that way for not f not for long no you tend to uh, it's kind of what's uh, caused a problem with manufacturers in in motorsport over the last sort of 20 years is now uh, companies got a business they're bought by other manufacturers yeah. and they think oh well, why why nissan and renault running a car in the same series that's that's double the money we're spending we'll drop one and yeah, then that's, that's how you end up losing manufacturers yeah. Because you and go racing to win at the end of the day, don't you? Exactly, exactly. That's why manufacturers do it. Yeah, it's like, um, Chevrolet came into the British Touring Car Championship and, and we lost Vauxhall because General yeah. Motors. Yeah. And it's it would be nice if, if um, the, the Vag Group do decide to keep both going. I'm not uh, sure. That, that would be nice. But I can, I, I've got this thing in my head where that they will run they will run side by side for a couple of years kind of take the knowledge from Audi to Porsche there is a lot of knowledge there in that yeah. Audi team yeah a little bit like WEC in yeah. the back and uh, Audi will then go perhaps go back to WEC or yeah. go uh, pastures new and uh, leave Porsche to, to, to do to the Porsche yeah. yeah maybe that's there's not been anything public about any talk of that it's very much we're getting more teams in and everything's smiley faces yeah yeah happy yeah. happy carry on uh, not so happy happy when you look at the table and you see that Chitita Tech Cheetah Tech Cheetah I really struggle with that one are <laughs> uh, leading so that's not so happy for Audi but Audi are second so, so yeah. two strong drivers yeah. for Tech Cheetah though yes yeah they really are 
Um, it's that strong grid. When you look at the drivers on the grid, there's a lot of talent yeah, there's out there. an awful lot of talent there. Everyone sort of had to adapt this on the series when it started. They thought, oh, this is going to be where Formula One drivers go to retire or the ones that never quite made it are yeah. going to end up there. But now there is there is a lot of talent. It's a place people aspire to be. Yeah, it really is. Which is, uh, which is cracking, to it's, be honest. It's great. And you've got drivers like Multara, who looks very ordinary on the grid, mm -hmm. and he's not an ordinary driver, no. but the level out there... It would be interesting to see how Massa goes next year when he comes into the series. Yes. After, it's a good benchmark. Yeah. He's, is he doing, he's d doing a few stock car races, Brazilian stock car yes. races this yeah, year. Yeah, with Barrichello. To keep his eye in. Yeah. So th that'll, that'll be interesting. There's the other thing, obviously, with the new season of, of Formula E start is it will it be september september october yes time? yeah i'm sure it's september the new cars there'll only be one of them the, there will be no pit stops as such no, but there will be mario zones yes this is where i <sighs> i don't want to judge it because i want to see how it works yeah yeah but yeah on paper i don't like it no but no it's it's going to be be interesting to have uh, pickups around the circuit that yeah. can give you advantages seems very arcadey, shall we say? Yeah, and a little bit death race. If you've seen, um, I mean, the only thing that could make film. it slightly more arcadey is if you go over one of these and then it gives you a random number. And if you get a number three, when you get within three seconds of the car in front, you push the button. And it slows them down. Things <laughs> <laughs> like that. Well, I'm looking forward to the Blue Torch show being used. That's going to be amazing. That That's going to annoy me so much. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne will win every race, but he won't actually get points because of the blue shirt. <laughs> so, uh, after we had Formula E that weekend, we had uh, the Canadian, Canadian Grand Prix. Yes. And Williams won. Williams won the raft race. Hey, do you know what? I didn't see anything on the raft race this year. Oh, I wondered if it still took yes, place. Yes, it still took place. So Williams won it. Excellent. So I wanted Excellent. to say that Williams have won something, and we can do it. And uh, yeah, we're a third of the season in now. Yes, we are, and it's uh, Sebastian Vettel now leads by a single point over Lewis Hamilton, I believe. I still think it's Hamilton's title. Do you? Um, yeah, I don't. Say that now. I, I still don't. think it's his. I mean, it depends again the summer break that we have. Uh, Mercedes have got work to do, yes. clearly. Uh, but last year they managed to do the work, and for whatever reason, the wheels fell off at Ferrari. Could happen again this year. I don't yeah. think it will. I think this one's Vettel's. I think if if the work does go wrong, if Ferrari do go backwards like last year, or if Vettel doesn't do it, I think heads will roll at Ferrari. Yeah, I think so. Evidently, I, I've not seen the actual article, but I think Marchioni's got himself in a little bit of hot water yes. with uh, Luca de Montezemolo. Yes, yeah. I read some of it this so. morning. And, yeah. Uh, the problem is, with Ferrari, it's such a high-pressure job. Yeah. That it really is. There's so much politics there. You've, you know, you've got to be this politician as well as a racer to go there. Yeah, um, yeah. It doesn't help the situation. No. No, it doesn't. But the, the race was the right, wasn't it? I that is the, probably the first highlights package I've nearly fell asleep <laughs> watching. <laughs> yes. Um, as a Ferrari fan or as a as a Vettel fan, it it, it would have been a good race. Yeah. It wasn't an amazing race. No. I struggled to stay awake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. It was. I mean, it was. A, it was a classic Vettel performance. Really, this was. When he's at the front, he goes. Uh, yeah, yeah, he that's makes what that. He does best. Makes that two, three second jump early on, and you don't see him again. No, uh, there was a little bit of. Um, it, it, I use air quotes excitement towards the end of the race, where it looked as if uh, Bottas had had the pace on Vettel. He ne never let him get too far away. No, it he, always seemed to be at a safe distance, though. Yeah, um, he. he took a few seconds out of him towards the end of the race but then had a big uh, big moment outbreak big himself mistake, yeah. uh, and then I just think threw in the towel at that, that particular point yeah, that was it which, uh, which was fair enough Hamilton seemed off form particularly at this this track is his favourite yeah or, uh, one of his favourites he just never seemed to, to hook it no. up from, from quality onwards no it just didn't work for him I mean even practice um, was all work for Shappen really wasn't it 
Verstappen's quickest. And I believe Red Bull had told Verstappen not to bring his family or his dad. Yes. You know, yeah, come out on your own. First weekend he came out on his own. and uh, First well, weekend he's not an accident yep. this season. Yeah, put his head down, got on yep. with it. Yeah, and he was very, did very, very good. good. Did, did a great job. Um, the clerk again was, was particularly stand out. Yes. Did, did a good job yeah, in that He was very one. good. Um, Stroll crashed out, unfortunately, at his home race. He into did. Hartley. Into Hartley. He was, Hartley. Uh, I, I just want to give Hartley a hug. He was practicing for IndyCar. Yeah, is that what it was? Yeah. <laughs> he, was he was up on it the wall. It was, a, it was quite a big accident. I remember shouting. It happened, and I, I don't usually shout when something like that happens, but I thought, that could be nasty. There's, uh, you don't tend to get too many accidents at Canada. Not not big one. Well, I say not big ones. But Robert Kubis. Yeah. Uh, but when uh, but that was like, a few like, years ago now. Was, year yeah, year in year out, ago. you don't get you don't get to tend to get too many big ones. But when one happens, it makes you sit up and I mean, obviously Kubitzis was yeah. horrendous. Yes. Um, probably the worst worst crash i've seen in a, in a modern mo again air quotes modern day formula one car the amazing thing was when he was asked at the end about it and they said have you seen it he said yes i saw it when i was live yes, there yes when i was actually <laughs> it happened to me shrugged it off yeah. <laughs> uh, there was a, i don't know if you've you've seen this it was it was before your your time as a formula one fan but alex verts had a big one oh. going into turn one i've not seen that yeah. i'll look that out it uh, yeah he ended up sideways up in the air sideways going between two cars <laughs> it, it, it was uh, it was quite a big one that one i think that was 90 98 99 okay uh, that that sort of era it's worth, worth a look on youtube if any look. of you have not, not seen that i'll try and find the link and post it below i think <laughs> and uh yeah uh, then there was a uh, checo and uh, science uh no no i was thinking checo and massa a couple of years ago they oh, had a yes. big one in yeah. turn one yeah sorry i'm thinking of this race so yes the more and more i think about it this place is getting more and more dangerous in there's, my head there's been quite a few and they are big accidents heinz harold french had a massive one there in a jordan a few years back oh. uh, olivier panet had a, broke both his legs there was that there uh, in uh 96. we're getting quite a list here we are uh, going to say this is this isn't including the Wall of Champions uh, either. No, this isn't including the Wall. I'm, I'm amazed they still have a race here, to be quite honest Can with we you. cancel everything we've just said? This place is a death trap. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a brilliant track. It's a fantastic track. I love track. it. And the race this year wasn't as good as it has been previous years. No, no, it was, it was probably uh, the, the worst the worst Canadian Grand Prix for a long, long time. I yeah. mean, admittedly, it has had some crackers. So Yes, yeah, you forgive it the odd. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's you, still. I, I love the fact they they still go there, and I, I yeah. hope they continue to still go yes. there for a long time. It's a it's a fantastic little track. It's great, and it's somewhere you you can overtake. Although we didn't see much of that this this week. No, and when you did, you had some little touches here and there. Parents, Paris and science. Yes. And, uh, yeah. I thought there was going to be a whole inquest into that with a beheading at the end of it if Checo had got his way. <laughs> yes. He wasn't very happy. Um, Checo's never very happy, not beyond the wheel. Not at the moment. He gets out and he sort of smiles. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Um, we had some uh, Verstappen and Bottas were wheel to wheel at the start. And yeah. Then it all sort of settled into a race. They went round, they pitted, they came out. Lewis was worried about his power. Yeah, yeah, seemed to have a lot of power in in early on in the way in the race, which sort of hampered mm -hmm. hampered him for the rest of mm. the time. They had some louvers on the front apparently, and they took those off at the pit stop. Right, and apparently that's to help with cooling. So uh, don't know if that helps at all. Yeah, issue. that's it. But a lot of people, am I right in saying a lot of people now that's the last race on that particular engine or have, have i got have i missed by a race and this is now the new engine this is now the new engine for most of them but it was the old engine for mercedes i think okay yeah because they didn't want to bring the upgrades yet that's so yes. they've got the new engines for france which will be this weekend and yes we we're at paul ricard this weekend which has not held a formula one race uh, for well, quite a while about 30 odd years mm. at least because uh back when i was growing up they used to use uh, many core yeah so it's gonna be interesting because a lot of people still test there yeah it's not the most aesthetically pleasing track from a point of view it, it's a lot of tarmac there's, there's so massive runoff areas which are just covered in different colored paint which 
I don't know. I. I don't, I don't like this style of track. There's so, so much um, emphasis on track limits at a place like this. Yeah, I want a penalty. If someone goes off, I don't want them to crash into the wall. I don't want them to get stuck in gravel and not be able to rejoin. But I want them, when they do rejoin, I want them to have had a penalty. They're punished for going off the track. Yeah, yeah. and track limits is, is one of those things we'll talk about in a minute with at the at Le Mans. Because uh, I know you didn't see much of Le Mans. No, I was, uh, yeah. I saw all of qualifying and then the actual physical race itself. I saw bits. Uh, they've made some changes to the circuit around, around the Porsche curves and, and whatnot, giving it a uh, bigger runoff, a little bit reminiscent of what is at Manny Core. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, track limits was... was just like issue, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, um, it, <laughs> it we wasn't, finish the Formula One? We'll finish the Formula One. Yeah. So, yeah, they were closing down at the end. Nothing was really going to happen across the finish line but it turned out the race had already finished yes the race had already finished uh, this, see this is this goes to show what a again air quotes poor race uh, this was the FIA actually wanted to finish it earlier than it than it should have done just to <laughs> just to <laughs> just get everyone home yeah because <laughs> it's a long flight it, 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 yeah yeah to Europe for most people yeah yeah um, the, the flag was I think the flag was waved one lap early, but yeah. because that happened, they now have to classify it two laps shorter. Yes, yeah. Uh, which means uh, this upset Daniel Ricciardo uh, the most because he lost his fastest lap that he set on that. And 70. his bonus that goes with it. Yes, yeah, which now goes to Max Verstappen, which is probably <laughs> the worst person it could have gone to uh, from Daniel Ricciardo's point of view. So, uh, yeah. will they have to a, this supermodel, I've never ever heard of her before this race. Uh, Winnie, Winnie Harlow. I have seen her. I, I keep saying Winnie Mandela for some <laughs> reason. <laughs> Winnie Harlow. I, I, she's been at a few races. I think she's she's mates with Lewis Hamilton. She she's is. Been at a few of the races. They spoke to her on the grid. Uh, Brundle shoved Hector Bellerin of Arsenal out the way, as if he was just a mind. Oh, to be fair, he was stood there. He's big. Like, he looked like a minder. To be fair, most uh, most players in the Premier League, most attackers in the Premier League, shove Hector Bellerin out of the way quite easily. <laughs> yeah, on. he didn't roll around on the floor this time. I'll oh, give no, him that. So, yeah, but uh, yeah, Brundle pushed him out the way to speak to her, and her first words were, "Yeah, I'm not really into Formula One. I'm just here because my friend's here." And then what with the early flag waving, I think she's got a lot of unnecessary hate on social media. Yeah, she has because it wasn't actually her fault. No, was she was told she was to told wave it. Put the flag. She yeah. waved it. And unfortunately, there's a photo of her that's been used a lot where she's looking down the pit, uh, down the track, the opposite way to where the cars are coming. She's looking where the cars are going with the flag out, posing. And people are using this photo. Like she's not even looking where the cars are coming from. And, uh, you know, it's just building up for her. I feel quite sorry for her. <laughs> she doesn't deserve this. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was pretty much the Formula One. Yes. Uh, Good, good result for Vettel. Strong weekend for for him. A Bottas with another good showing. Yeah. And Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg finished seventh again, I believe. Six, five, five, six, six, yeah. So seventh, um, yeah. Renault actually asserting their dominance as that fourth fourth place team now, uh, which is good because as a certain team have announced this morning that I am going to have the Renault engine anymore. Yes. Yeah. Red Bull are um, switching to Honda. So, how many laughing faces did you write when you saw that this morning? There was quite a few. I even had to stop and take a breather before I sent more. <laughs> um, either they know something no one else does, or they they they're just desperate. Really burnt bridges with with Renault. Could it be a bit of both? Could be a bit of both, but this can only help McLaren in the long run. Yes, I hadn't even thought about McLaren. Yeah. Speaking of McLaren and Formula One and well I'm going to throw in a bit of IndyCar and Le Mans here as well let's get this out of the way now um, Fernando Alonso who? <laughs> a, some, some Spanish driver he used to be Formula One world champion he's now he's now gone to um, World Endurance Championship driving what? for Toyota I oh, think. you wouldn't know there's not much of it about no no but uh, yes he keeps uh Hijacking Buemi and uh, uh, Nakajima's car, so. Oh, you mean Swiss Alonso and Japanese Alonso? Yes, yes, yes those two. Yes. <laughs> um, 
Fernando Alonso went to Le Mans. We'll talk about Le Mans a little bit more in 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 a minute. He's obviously in search of the triple crown. Yeah. He now has two elements of that complete. Now we know Zach Brown at McLaren is in talks with an IndyCar team. Uh, possibly Andretti. He wants to get a a team done. Uh, I was having this chat with um, with someone else this morning. I can't help but feel that Lewis. I can't help but feeling this is his last year. Yeah. I. Uh, you think he would go back to McLaren and drive IndyCar with Alonso at McLaren? I do. From from there's a few reasons I say that. Now you said you were going to spring something uh, on me. That really <laughs> this has. Is, this That's, is it. Yeah, yeah. It's all uh, making sense. I I. In my mind, I think Daniel Ricciardo will take his place at Mercedes. I can't see Ricciardo in a red car. I, I can't see it, no. He Not won't. with Vettel there. And to be honest, even without, because the politics will bug him. Yeah. He's not like that. No, no. Um, so I, that's where I think Ricciardo will go. And I think this is why it's taken so long to, to sort a, a, a deal out. I, I think Hamilton will pack it in at the end of the year. There, there's a couple of... I, I always thought perhaps if he got his his fifth title, I think that would be enough for him. Yeah. But on the other hand, if he doesn't get his fifth title, I think he would probably jack it in because he know, he then knows if he had a shot at, at Schumacher's record, I think he might go for it. Yeah. But realistically, if he doesn't win the title this year, he won't have a shot at Schumacher's record. So I think he'll pack it in anyway. Yeah. But I can see him being so happy with what he completed, getting one more than Vettel, and and calling it a day. So that's part of the reason I think he'll he'll, he'll be off. He's always kind of he has mentioned it in interviews before. He said he wants to end his career back at McLaren. Yeah. Now the Formula One team uh, is not going to be the best place for him to end it. No. Uh, at this moment in time, the car's not competitive. So whether he 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 does stick out another couple of years with, with Mercedes perhaps gets another title and then goes to McLaren when they're in a better position if they're in a better position that's a possibility but I can really see if McLaren get this deal done with, with Andretti or uh, maybe Penske someone you, you never know to run a two car assault in IndyCar with Fernando Alonso where I mean pretty much that we think that's a done deal. He's yes. he's going to be full time in car now. After yeah. the result of Le Mans, he'll be full time in car. Yeah, that's his his highest priority yeah. is the five hundred. He's also said in interviews he wouldn't be adverse to working with with Alonso as a teammate again. They had the issue at McLaren, and he's been asked many times about it since. And he says he doesn't have a problem working with Alonso. Um, and I think Alonso has said the same. Yeah. So, again. God, it's all starting to come together now. It's I can, yeah. And where does Hamilton spend most of his time when he's not at a racetrack? America, in the studio in America. So that was my sort of epiphany this morning. If McLaren do run a two-car team, what better, what better driver to, to, to two better drivers to take to yeah. another series? Yeah. How do you think Lewis would do on an oval? I think he'd love it. Yeah. I, th I think he's a you know he loves his speed he's a he does he does whether he'd do it for long I I can see Alonso Alonso having a, quite a long career in IndyCar if, if he wanted to yeah uh, Lewis perhaps not so much but I think he'd love to give it a go and it raises profile in America yeah it would yeah, yeah. so that's now my you said of, that, that that all makes sense that's, that's my sort of off the wall kind of suggestion for for next next year or year after well, well next year really and then I presume that Leclerc will go into Kimi's seat if Ricciardo isn't yeah ah. yeah because let's face it uh, Kimi's uh, Kimi's not allowed to do any better than he's doing anyway even if he even if he wanted to Leclerc won't be either Leclerc won't be but also Leclerc knows that Vettel's not going to be around for, for much longer yeah in, in the grand scheme yeah, of things he's racing for that number one seat then he's so it's a, get in there be a good boy and yeah you'll learn, get the, learn from Vettel yeah 
then then the job's yours when uh, when Vettel goes. Yeah, that all makes perfect sense. I wonder what the odds are. So. <laughs> I might have to find those betting companies that you can tweet and they'll give you odds on something. Yeah. I'll say, what are the odds of uh, Alonso? <laughs> and that's that's, that's just something to think about. Yeah, that, that that's thrown me. I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Alonso and Le Mans. And, uh, well, just Alonso, because he was the only one driving the car. He was. <laughs> did, to I, be fair, he did do a quadruple stint in the night. He did. He did, he did a very, very quick one. His um, average lap time was, I think, two seconds quicker than the number seven Toyota. Yes. They were and points. over a second quicker than any of the other drivers in his car at yeah. that time. Apparently there were points during the night. Obviously you've got lap traffic and everything, but he took five seconds a lap out of Lopez on yeah. more than one occasion. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, didn't go there as a passenger. No. He was part of that team and he raced it with Nakajima, with Bowie. Yeah. And obviously they won uh, Spa six hours together as well. Yes. Uh, yeah. So that's two on the trot for, yeah. for them. So Alonso could be world endurance champion by the end of he well, could by this time next yeah. year. Which then I think he seriously would just walk. Out. I don't think he'd get him in a world endurance car again in a huge rush. No, you no, know. it would be all about the Indy Five Hundred yeah. and and the Indy Car Series. Yeah. Uh, track limits again. We'll go back to track limits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they made alterations to Porsche curves, uh, giving it a, a much larger runoff area. They painted it gravel coloured, but there wasn't actually gravel there. Helpful. Uh, <laughs> now, this was causing a lot of problems for the drivers. They seemed to think that because the wall was moved further back, uh, uh, like there was a lot of incidents there this year. Yeah. Uh, they think because the walls were, were pushed further back, they thought the challenge had gone out the corners and they were taking them quicker than they would have done had there have been a wall there. And yeah. it was catching a lot of people out. They were they were lifting off and pitching in and and the cars were just going and it happened quite a few times, um, none more so than one poor guy I, I can't remember his name but he was in a he was in a prototype car, and uh, I'm not sure if it was mechanical or if he just lost it, but he went sailing across the infield, straight across the track, and backwards into the wall. Now. He did, obviously Le Mans different rules if you can get the car back to the pits they will allow you to get the car back to the pits yeah, yeah. Uh, he fired it up again uh, drove it and it stopped about six car lengths along in the in the runoff area it caused a, a slow zone uh, they had to uh, marshals had to drag it back to a safer position uh, he got out tried to get the rear of the car off eventually somehow managed managed to do that uh, started to get try and get himself back out on track again the car stopped I have the names here because funny enough this was one of the points I did see yeah and I made a note of it I didn't realise they put a phone and a toolkit in the car yes for that eventuality for that but yeah sorry you were, you were saying um, yeah. they're allowed to it's 10 paces of the car I believe that they must stay within if they yeah. leave that then the car is retired yeah uh, but he did um, he did his absolute best try and get this car back on as I say he tried to pull away again for a second time the car stopped they had to drag him it's another another yeah. slow zone for everyone yeah. they had to drag him back and they hooked him up to the crane and then unhooked him yes yeah <laughs> now I, this had been going on for about an hour and a half I believe yeah. roughly uh, back of the car completely missing two flat rear tyres he gets the car going it sort of shudders almost to a halt but no he, he gets out he's getting <laughs> heading towards the track bearing in mind he's probably 800 metres away from the entrance to the pit lane yes Porsche curves are not far so, away so from close and just the the whole engine erupts into flames there was fire lots of fire <laughs> lots of fire um, so he then obviously had to had to abandon it so I think he should he should get some sort of award for just just trying just not giving up no. that was <laughs> You know, he obviously he's, really didn't want to let his team and his teammates he's down. He's another driver. I just want to give a hug off. Yeah, he did, he, he did his best. He was brilliant out there, and I'm, I'm sure his team would have said, you know, <laughs> that you, you really did go above and beyond. A lot of drivers would have got out and said, that's, that's that, hook it up and retire it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to feel for him. But uh, anyway, going going back to the main sort of process of the race, uh, there was we had a little bit of uh, trouble at the start. 
uh, involving Andre Lotter in the rebellion. Yes. Not quite sure if the bodywork was loose before he went into the. That's what I've read. Because Card didn't seem to want to turn in to turn one, and then he, he went wide into that, and then couldn't slow the card down for for the S's and yeah. uh, wiped out uh, someone else. So incident straight away which is not what you want in a 24 hour race to be <laughs> immediately on the back foot no uh, seven toyota uh, got in front and and looked quite comfortable really for the first part part of the race the yeah. eight was always there or thereabouts this was all part of the race that i saw and i just kept sitting there thinking that seven looks good it looks steady it, you know it, it, it and i'm i was cheering on the number eight car because bohemi was in it yeah, yeah, I was um, very much the number seven car because I'm, I'm still bitter about Alonso <laughs> taking Ant Davidson's place. Yeah, um, and that would have been his that would have been his car, the number eight. So I was all all about Mike Conway and and <laughs> the, the last remaining Brit in the Toyota team. Uh, they, had a, they had a good run, I think. When I when I left it before going to bed that night, the seven was in the lead by over two and a half minutes because Sebastian Brummy had sped in a slow zone in the number eight. Yes. Uh, and uh, given himself a, a minute stop and go penalty. So they, they took that, came back out about two and a half minutes behind and, and I went to bed. Then... Uh, Alonso got in and did his quadruple uh, stint. Yeah. 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 And uh, clawed the majority of that gap back. Uh, and when I woke up, the eight was out in front. That's it. Well, apparently, after the quadruple stint, Nakajima had then got in the car, carried on closing in. He passed passed Kobayashi, and it was about two thirds of the way into the race yep. that he made that pass. Yep. And uh, it, yeah, it was pretty much there was no real uh, there was no real dramas for the eight uh, from then on in. They did have another uh, one minute stop go penalty because Sebastian Verrami sped in the slow zone again. Uh, but so did Mike Conway, so that cancelled each other out. It out yeah. Uh, now the number seven had a little bit of drama late on, I think with about an hour and a half, just over an hour and a half to go. Yeah. Uh, it was crawling around the track and it was put into um, slow zone mode, purposely because they forgot to come in. <laughs> now, I'm not quite sure how you forget to come in to the pits with, with an engineer screaming box, box, box in your ear. I think Camus was just away with it. He was probably <laughs> so in the zone. We won't go into too much of the controversies and the, and the, the stories. Toyota obviously wanted the number eight car to win if possible. I don't think they were going to do anything deliberately. If the seven was leading by a mile, I don't think they would have deliberately... They wanted a win, and that was that. Exactly. Yeah. The win was the most important thing. They wanted the eight. But if possible, they would have taken the seven. Obviously. Eight had settled out in the lead. Yeah. Seven had dropped back. Yeah. Um, Kamui then got two 10-second stop-go penalties. Yes, he did. So that, one that, for the fuel right. and one for too many laps in yes. the stint. Yeah. Yeah, he had to crawl all the way back to the pits on slow zone mode because he missed the pit lane and would have run out of fuel otherwise. Uh, and that was the last real bit of drama in that race as yeah. far as as far as Toyota had. To and they honest. got their photo of them coming over the line together. Yeah, first and second. Two laps between the two of them. First and about and 100 second. GT cars yes. in the shot. Yes. So. <laughs> Incidentally, GT battle was very good. Uh, the, the pink Porsche and pink Pete uh, eventually won the GT battle. I think we knew all weekend it was going to be one of the Porsches. Yes. It's going to be that one or the Vulcan ones. Yeah. Um, um, apparently the drivers to... chose their liveries. Yes. Apparently they were yeah. given a choice and that's what they chose. Yeah. Yeah. The Fords look, look quick. <laughs> <laughs> I have a new watch and it's setting my... Yeah. Wow. Well, the brief interlude from Chris Young there. <laughs> Here on Radio Pole Mates. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. It's Chris Young and Cassidy Pope. <laughs> We're thinking of you. That is so clever. <laughs> <laughs> I got this thing yesterday and I'm still amazed by it. Right. <laughs> no, I'm leaving that in. I'm not cutting that out. Let's stay in. Great. GTEs. GTEs, yes. Um, Obviously, pink Porsche or Rockman's Porsche one and two. Uh, I believe I, I'm not quite sure who was so. I think it was the, uh, the Ford GT of Bordeaux. Bordeaux, yeah. 
uh, they, they had a very very strong middle part of the race the Fords but just couldn't quite quite keep it going they obviously had a straight line deficit to the um, the Porsches I think everyone did yeah every yeah. car every GT car was just those Porsches were gone yeah yeah uh, LMP2 interesting news actually broke today oh. at LMP2 jean Verne's Verne's team uh, and car the, the G-Drive Spitzitola and Rusinov yes yes uh, one LMP2 on Sunday, but it was stripped from them this morning for uh, uh, manipulating their fuel rig to um, fuel the cars quicker uh, than allowed. It was quite a bit quicker as well. I've seen the times and it was ridiculously quicker. I, I did actually see a tweet from another driver this morning. I won't, won't mention any names, but uh, actually on race day he said, or it was mentioned, how the hell are they doing that so quickly? And it turns out, yeah. <laughs> they, were, they, were they were cheating, yeah. So, um, although they are appealing it, are they? They are appealing it. Okay. They still Maybe don't just... believe they were cheating. Actually, the one this year, aside from the fact, a little bit of a, oh, damp scoop's probably a little bit harsh on it. It's still a very good race and it's very entertaining, but only one manufacturer this year. Yeah. It kind of takes a little bit of the um, uh, excitement away because you know. You know it's going to be Toyota. Toyota had it won unless they broke no, down. Hybrids. And and there are so many, they've added so many rules and regs this year. Um, the non-hybrid cars are getting penalised if they lap quicker than the Toyotas was was one. Um, I, mean, I understand it's your, it's your flagship race. It, you want the LMP1 cars to uh, to be the overall winners. I, I get that. But deliberately trying to stop other people from winning no. is the winner should be the winner and that's that it's, you it's, can't it's a 24 hour race I yeah mean, this uh, dates back to the early 2000s Penske ran the RS Spider and it was when Porsche sort of first came back into endurance racing after a little bit of a, of a, of a break they were LMP2 cars they were lightning fast and they were beating the R8s at certain races in the American Le Mans series throughout the year ACO banned them from entering entering Le Mans because they thought they had a chance of winning outright, it's which not right. is is ridiculous no. to be honest. I think if you if you really are going to start playing around with stuff like that, you make the differences in categories so big that there is no chance for that to happen. Yeah, and, exactly. and, and you don't have this middle ground LMP two car. You you have a slower a, a much yeah. slower category. Yeah. And yeah. I, I just think the way they went about it this year was all wrong. They had like uh, they weren't allowed to go more than it, fourteen laps, was it, or or eleven laps? Uh, you you had to not run more than a certain amount of laps before you pitted, which again seems ridiculous to me. You want to try and extend your fuel run as long as possible. Part of the whole it, process of the, the race is trying to was just taken out of it this yeah. year by having the, all these different rules and regs, which I hope I know you were in a bit of a nothing season because it's the super season and they want to get all the new regs in for, for 2019 where I do believe after 2019 it will start in August I think the first round yep. of WEC will be Silverstone in August yeah, uh, and it will end with Le Mans in the following year so we'll have like a football star season like yep. Formula Redo at the moment yep. uh, uh, it'll be like an 18-19 season or a 19-20 season and um, and you end with the showpiece. You end with Le Mans. Yeah, which I, I like. That. I like that. I like idea. that. Um, it was getting a little bit of stick on, on from the commentary team yesterday until everyone on social media pointed out to them. Well, you, you finish with your showpiece. It's, it's, yeah, it's what you do. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, everything will be to play for at Le Mans next yeah, year. Yeah, it'll be huge. Uh, and and it just puts even more on it, even it more does. emphasis on this this race. It does. Yeah. So exciting times to come! Uh, obviously, the rules are changing as well. They're bringing it that the, the L LMP ones are going. Yeah, and we're having more road based hyper car yeah, style. That's it. We're going back to almost like the the mid to late nineties, where you put your, your McLaren F ones and uh, your Porsche GTR ones, uh, your Mercedes CLK GTs, and and those Toyota GT one. Uh, it's probably a really famous mental looking thing it was <laughs> somehow road legal good looking cars yes it's quite exciting to see 
all these Seems different things with the Formula E changing as well. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's good, looking different. Good future for motorsport, I think, yeah. coming up, which is good. But probably now, after covering Le Mans and Alonso, well done, Alonso. Um, I do feel a little bit sorry for, for him in a way because he does get all this from the people who actually enjoy motorsport that don't appreciate his driving. Um, the press blow it up into so much proportion that Alonso's well, done this, Alonso's done Alonso's that. Alonso's car on pole, yes. and it was Nakajima that had done that it. Had done it. Yeah. Uh, so the negative stuff, I, I don't think he deserves, but unfortunately, it's just a press-related issue. Yeah. Um, it's not him. No, it's not him at all. Uh, uh, he did a very, very good um, job. When they came in on the in lap, um, he was so so proud to win it, wasn't it? Yeah, him and yeah, he was. I did think, however, when uh, that he pulled up on the start finish straight and, and Alonso and uh, Buemi got on the car, uh, I did think when he pulled away that his, uh, his, his hybrid power was going to kick in and just shoot both of them off the top. <laughs> I so, thought they'd knocked him out. When well, they jumped <laughs> on him in the car, he stood in the um, yeah, I'm sure he's got concussion cafe at Brands. Uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, no, it was, a, um, it, was a, it was a good good race. Not classic maybe but from what I've uh, read not a yeah. classic but um, I mean every every 24 hour race I think is, is entertaining it's never a foregone conclusion that something can always happen as Toyota found out two years ago yeah yeah. Um, where they uh, they were leading comfortably and the, the car failed on the second to last lap um, and I could have still seen that happening this year yeah I still had the niggle, nigg, niggling doubt yep yeah, yep yeah. so it's, it's it's never over uh, so there was there was still a bit of intrigue and well done to Toyota they've they've kept coming back they've kept trying they're now the second Japanese team ever to to win Formula uh, win Le Mans Le Mans yeah um, and I think they're the first well the first Japanese team I think to win one too because I don't think Mazda managed that back no, when they, they no, won it so it's brilliant it's huge and two Japanese drivers in the car yes finished, that finished the races yeah mm -hmm. so Just very well done Toyota I hope now they keep coming back and they don't pack it in it's a bit of a worry with no other manufacturers there that they yeah might, but hopefully with this new season new regs coming yeah, hopefully yeah, they'll, they'll bring more manufacturers they'll do it. back but yeah i think probably the more good place to i think it is uh, over the two weekends that we've done who would be your standout driver do you think i go back to, I've, got, I've got two first weekend i would i would probably say tom chilton yeah that's uh, who i would go with that drive he's yeah first time we've really seen him back in british touring cars with with an opportunity to win a really good strong fight yeah uh, sustained throughout the weekend yeah just a one-off um so tom chilton would be my driver of the day for the first weekend um weekend just gone i'm gonna say nakajima Jamie. that pole lap was I sat and watched qualify and then he was just on it and especially as every time the camera went in the garage it was looking for Alonso and then you had Nakajima and Boemi stood in the background and Nakajima went out and did it yep. did the business yep I can't argue with that no. so Chilton and Chilton and, Chilton and Kazuki yeah there we go I'm on that bombshell of our extra long podcast for the week yes <laughs> yeah uh, we did have a lot to cover this time yes so, yeah so please please bear with us also um we'll put a link down in the description below this time we do have some t-shirts out we do have some t-shirts out we have some stickers and some stickers and bits and pieces on red bubble uh, so we'll put a link to that below um i'm wearing mine now you are wearing yours now i'm saving mine for sunday you. where we are hoping to get up to London and see the start of the Modball Rally. Yes, but they've moved the start this year, so we're not sure if we're going to ever make it, but hopefully we will. We're going to do our best. Um, um, there is a video coming of the weekend Butchfest at Brands Hatch. Yes, yeah. I filmed a little bit there. I wasn't feeling too good, but I did try and film a bit there. Yeah, yeah we're going to try and get some gaming stuff up on the channel as well, some motorsport-related gaming or car-related gaming if possible. Sounds good. Uh, that's in the pipeline. Also, um, there might be there might be some other vlogs that we that we filmed previously that might make an appearance. You never know. We'll try and you never know. Uh, but yeah, exciting times. And uh, if you do see one of our Palmate stickers around, tweet us. Tell us where you've seen it. Yes. Yep. Yeah, let us know. You might even get yourself another sticker sent through. I think we can organise that. I, I don't think that would be a problem. No. No. And uh, yeah, exciting times. Yeah. 
Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. See you See later. You guys. Bye. Bye.